Hey out there in YouTube land. It's Tuesday and it's 17 degrees outside. 17 degrees, that's some cold weather. I came over to the Kingsburg house. I wanted to make sure the heat was working good. The water heater's on. I don't want to see any busted pipes while I'm waiting. Because I got about another 12, 13 days to wait before the refinance goes through. Once I get the refinance through, then I can put a renter in over here. But in the meantime, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I'm not a big waiter. <laughs> I made a couple of videos last week about getting back into eBay to, you know, kill some time, make some money, get another stream of income. And uh, today I came up with the realization that I'm probably not gonna do eBay that much. <laughs> I'm not knocking eBay. Like I've said in previous videos, like at the height of my eBay experience when Diane and I, well, it was Diane's store, but I was just riding her coattails working over there. I ran the eBay side of it, and a couple months, I sold $30,000 worth of stuff on eBay. That doesn't mean I put the profit of $30,000 in my pocket, but we made quite a bit of money on eBay. I'm getting back into it, and I stole everything I could off of the kids in order to sell, and broken phones, and some other electronics, and, you know, I already made a couple hundred bucks. I shipped a couple things today. But really, if I want to be honest, it was kind of a diversion from real estate. One of the nice things about having my own YouTube channel is I can make videos however I want. And I want to be real with you guys. Real estate is my thing. And all of a sudden, the market changes. Let me give you an example. What do you mean by change, Harry? There's a house for sale, a really small house in Union Beach. Like an eighth of a mile or closer to one that we have that my in-laws are in. I bought my in-laws house. They're over there renting it off of us now for below market. <laughs> I had to throw that in. <laughs> but I bought that house for $109,000, 109. It needed lots of work. But there's a house for sale right now in similar condition, same size. It's been vacant for at least 10 years, needs lots of work. And they have it on the market for 235,000. 235,000, I bought mine for 109. That's an indication of where the market is right now for someone like me to buy. That's a tough place to be, right? That's a house I'm talking about, 235,000. You see all those notices on the window? That's from the town. It's been vacant and there's been no heat or anything in there. It's terrible inside. You see the house next door, it's lifted. That gives me a good idea that this house needs to be lifted. I think there's two people inside taking a look at this house right now. There's nothing else on the market. So somebody's gonna buy this thing for probably above list price, 250,000, let's say. If they move into it and it's worth 330 in the end, I mean, I don't know if they have to put 80,000, but you get my point, there's no profit there. All right, so that house, 235,000, if somebody was going to put in, let's say 65,000, just run some easy numbers. You're up to 300,000, you're all in. What would it be worth at the end? It'd probably be worth 320, 325. I don't know. And that's if it doesn't have to be lifted. But with the house being lifted right next door, it's a good chance it has to be lifted. My point is that the costs for houses, I guess all over the country, has skyrocketed. That has made my job a little bit more difficult. A little bit? Come on! Really difficult. I had that in combination with a couple other little things that were happening that kind of made me think, well, maybe I'll try something else. eBay. I had the appraiser come in $62,000 less than what I had estimated over at the Kingsburg house. And it was an odd situation because I'm not someone that just takes an estimate and like willy-nilly says, oh, it's going to be this amount. No, no, I put quite a bit of homework into it, and I'm really good at it, too. And he dug in and was, like, trying to make a point of the values in the area. I don't know what he was doing. To make a long story short, where I was going to be taken out forty dollars or $50,000 over there in the Kingsburg house, I now have to come to the table with almost $10,000. It threw a wrench in my plans. On top of that, I have another piece of property in Union Beach where I was having some troublesome tenants that I was just trying to get out and I haven't received any rent from them in about 
one and a half or two months. So that threw a little bit of a wrench in the, uh, the cash flow as well. The combination of these things made me start a second guessing real estate, which is kind of weird because it's been my thing. I've made 300 videos on, on real estate. I came up with the conclusion that <laughs> I think I might have said this. I don't think I'm going to get to my next million dollars selling stuff on eBay. The only way I could do it with, is with real estate. So I'm going to have to either adapt and overcome or find something that's going to fill that void. And right now, I can't find anything that's going to fill that void for me. Let me give myself a little pep talk. You know, I've made videos where I have said that Diane was nice enough and kind enough and trustworthy enough to let me use her credit cards when we first got together. Well, not when we first got together, but three and a half years ago. I was able to take two credit cards and use like $30,000 cash advance on those in order to buy, buy our first property. And that is, that's, that's awesome that someone would trust me with that. Nothing for nothing. Is that the second time I said that in this video? <laughs> you want to talk about pressure. Your wife gave you her credit cards to use for a house. You better perform. <laughs> that was some pressure. And it worked out. And then it worked out for a total of 10 times in three years. 10 houses in three years. It's a little bit of a pep talk, Harry. You have done this before. You're going to do this again. You're going to get to another million dollars faster than your first million. This is me giving myself a pep talk. You have overcome way bigger obstacles than this in your life. I'm not going to go into detail, but being homeless is a pretty big obstacle to overcome. So now the real estate market, the values are high, a tenant doesn't want to get out, and an appraiser doesn't want to give you value, and those things are going to keep you down? Come on, put your big boy pants on, Harry. I feel better just saying it out loud. I wouldn't talk to you guys like that until I'm talking to me. So the only way to find another deal is to find another deal, which means I got to get back out there. I got to keep on looking. I got to throw out some feelers to people that I haven't been really feeling. Get on the MLS. Talk to my realtor friends. And you guys, you guys can send me a deal too. All right, so the next uh, video I make, I'm going to be looking at a deal and hopefully putting an offer in, right?